Okay, first I want to give you Richter's perception on Washington policy. Now I'm a physicist, and all physicists are jealous of Newton because Newton has laws, and we all want laws. So I want to give you my four laws of political inertia. Okay, law one. The future is hard to predict because it hasn't happened yet. What does this mean? It means, well, we can't actually do anything because we don't know enough and we've got to wait. Uh, law two. Uh, law two is no matter how good a solution is, someone will demand that we wait for a better one. This is one of the problems of some of the environmental movement. Now, I gave you an example when we were talking earlier about emissions and natural gas for coal and all that sort of thing. Natural gas for coal uh, is a way to very rapidly reduce our national emissions by 25%. Uh, but it doesn't reduce them to zero for electrical generation. So there are some environmental groups which are strongly opposed to any incentives to switch from coal to natural gas. I think that's really wrong. Richter's law number three, short-term pain trumps any long-term advantage. There are armies of lobbyists out there. Anything you're going to do, even if it benefits society as a whole, is liable to hurt some segment. I talked about uh, converting from coal to gas. Coal state senators are never going to go with that. Wyoming, Virginia, West Virginia, you've got six senators who are going to start a filibuster. Can you get around them to do it? And Richter's fourth law, uh, the biggest subsidies go to the least efficient technologies. This is an example of corn-based ethanol. Corn-based ethanol, we give big subsidies to the people who blend it with gasoline. We give 41 cents per gallon to them. Why? There's a federal law that says you have to blend it with gasoline. Uh, do they reduce the price of a blend by 41 cents per gallon? No. They increase their profits. You can go all through the subsidies business and you'll find a good story at the very beginning. Why do we want this subsidy? There's some societal good we want to encourage, but then you can't turn them off. Uh, you're going to do subsidies, and some of the things you subsidize are going to work terrifically, and some of them aren't, but you can't end the bad ones. So there, there you have the four laws of societal inertia, or let me call them the four laws of government inertia, and you've got to get over that. Uh, that's one of the reasons, if I could loop around back, I want to move to this energy in three dimensions view because I think you can pull together a more powerful alliance. Uh, on policy, I'm an incrementalist, not a perfectionist. Uh, I have no idea what the technology of uh, greatest benefit at the end of this century is going to be. If I go back to the last century, I don't have a clue back in 1900 what the best technologies were going to be uh, in 2100. It was just the beginning of the age of oil. Our ships still ran on coal, natural gas, nah, nobody, and that sort of stuff. Nuclear power, windmills, windmills that are grind grain in Holland. So I'm an incrementalist. I want to say, let's do something that will do some good now. Let's not wait for the perfect. Let's get on the way and let's consider cost as well as benefit and then maybe we can get something done.